Whoa, hey, is this a magic ape block? I've heard of these things before. Apparently you can ask them any yes or no question and they'll answer accordingly. Okay, magic ape block, will I ever reach 5,000 subscribers? Unfortunately not. Uh, okay. Um, oh, will they ever add fireflies back into Minecraft? Please? No. Okay, do you have anything positive to say? Uh, yeah, I, I figured as much. Hello everyone and welcome back. Mudkip Ninja here and today we have another beautiful tutorial on the horizon. Today is a command basics video. And if you couldn't tell from the intro, we are going to be talking about titles today. Now, titles are an incredibly versatile tool for mostly map makers to use to tell their players any information at a given moment directly on their screen. So you don't have to worry about your players reading text on a sign or in a book. You can just force shove it into their eyeballs uh, directly on the screen itself. Now, I know I showed you a little example in the intro with our magic eight block. Oh, don't, don't worry about that. It's just a negative, negative block. But as another example, this is the kind of thing you can do with a title. So if I hit this button, you can see, bam, it's tutorial time. So today, we're going to look at the slash title command, and we are going to break down all of the parameters one by one, so you guys can have a better understanding of how to use this in your game. So, as you just saw, a title showed up on our screen, but how exactly do we start building a title for our players to see? Well, luckily, we have the title command in Minecraft, which is actually pretty self-explanatory. If I type slash title, you can see that's all we need right there, and that will begin our foray into the title command itself. If I press space, you can see we have, first of all, our selector parameters, which we've talked about in a previous basics video before. And as we're just working in single player today, we will just use at P for the nearest player, just so we know that the nearest player is going to be the one seeing this title. Per usual, as I've said many times before, you can use at A for all players, random players with that R, so on and so forth. So now we're building our title like this. We have slash title at P. And then if I press space, you can see we have a list of parameters here. Now we're going to talk about most of these, but we, the only one we want to focus on right now is actually building ourselves a title, which once again is the title parameter. It can get a little bit confusing, but don't worry too much. Slash title command, your selector, and then the title parameter. So the way this works inside a command block is if we type slash title, we'll put at P, and then we want to work on what our title actually says. Everything after this is a JSON input uh, or text for uh, for us to be able to do that. So we need a pair of quotes. You can see if I actually delete them, you can see we have incorrect argument. And if I put anything else, it says the use JSON reader uh, right there. So we actually want to put some quotes. Okay. Now it really is just as easy as putting whatever we want inside these quotation marks and that will show up on our screen. So for our purposes, let's just say something easy like first title and I'll go ahead and press done. That's it, the command is set. If I press this button, bam, look at that. First title actually shows up on screen. You can write whatever you want in here. Uh, we can write testing just to show you that it actually will just immediately change. Once I press the button, we wait for it to fade and then bam, testing is now on the screen. That's the basics of making a title, but we can go a little bit further with altering that text in the title to make it a little bit cooler and more immersive. Okay, next up, as we saw in the couple of intro examples, you can actually color your title as well. But because it's a JSON reader, as we saw in that first command block, we have to be careful about the parameters we input there because it's not just your normal Minecraft parameters. Like we can't just type slash title uh, at P title and then color. Uh, it's not going to work like that. We have to input some fancy things in quotation marks, just like we do when we're naming items in our other videos. So let's go ahead and open the command block here, and we will set up our command again. We will say title at P, and we will work on our title once more. Uh, and this time, we are going to go ahead and open and close our curly brackets, as we're going to be putting a whole bunch of stuff in here. So... I know what you might be thinking if you've watched my previous videos before. Because we want a string, we're going to want something that says text in quotation marks, right? Well, normally that is the case, but title is a bit of a special case where we have to actually say in quotation marks, keybind, like that. The reason we have to do this is because the keybind sets the first part of the title, letting it know that this is what's going to make it display on screen. You don't have to worry about what any of that means other than the fact that this is pretty much synonymous for text. Okay, so after that we put a colon to say what the key bind is or the text. Another set of quotation marks and you can see it actually turns yellow because it's happy with the amount of quotation marks in here. And let's just keep it simple and say this is a title, just like that. Okay, 
Now, if I did actually press done just like this, you'll see nothing's changed. It still works uh, with just a few extra steps because instead of just quotation marks with our text, we now have curly brackets with their key bind, which says this is a title. Same difference. Okay, so now from here on out, it's pretty much just like modifying the text of an item because Minecraft works on all the same code base for this and uses JSON or JSON for pretty much all of their text in their game. So if we go ahead and add a comma here to say that we want another parameter inside, just like before, we'll go ahead and add a double set of quotes and put color. You guys should be used to this by now. We'll put a colon and then another pair of quotes. And then what color do we want to do? I think for this example, we will do gold. Um, okay, so if I press dumb and then hit the button there, you can say now this is a title is in gold, which is fantastic. That's just what we wanted. But just like the example from before, we can take it a step further. So now you know you can actually color your titles, but you can also give them fancy uh, text stuff like bold, italics, underlined. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we add another comma, another set of double quotes, and put the parameter underlined, and then the colon, another set of quotes, and then we put true. So that is what it's going to look like. Oh, my mistake. Uh, because this is a Boolean, true or false, we don't actually need it in the quotation marks. As you can see, it is just underlined is set to true. Okay, now if we press done and hit the button, look at that. This is a title in gold and it's underlined. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of fancy stuff you can do to alter the text, just like we've done in our countless videos before, just by entering the curly brackets and starting with keybind. Okay, that's well and good, but what if we wanted to make it super fancy? Let's say we're making a mini game and we want it to really stand out for our players. Well, something we could do is actually break up our fancy title into multiple parts so we can color and individually edit each part. Now the way to do that is we're going to build it from scratch once more. So we'll say our title command at P, we're going to be working on the title. And then we're going to open and close our curly brackets just the same way we did before. And we are going to start with our E bind in a set of double quotes to let it know that this is the start of our title and a colon. And just like we were building before, we will start with the word this and put a space after it. But that's where we're going to stop for this line. Now if I hit done, same as before and go ahead and press this button, we just get this and you can't really see it, but there is a space after that word. Okay, now to break our title up into multiple parts, let's first start editing just the word this and see what we want to do with it. So now that we have the text there, just like before, let's go ahead and give this a color. Let's also start off as gold. And just to see that we are being pretty synonymous with our previous one, we will also go ahead and set underlined to true. Okay, same as before, press the test button, this with the space, you can actually see it now because the underlined gold and underlined. Awesome. Our first part of our title is done. Now, how do we move on to our second part here? How's it going to know that it's one title? Well, if we go back to the beginning, or you can do this when you start, we can open up a set of square brackets, just like we've done with our enchantments. This lets us know that it's an array of text or titles inside of this set. So we'll go to the end and also end the square brackets just so we don't forget to do it later. And there we go. Now our first part of this title is right here in these curly brackets. So if I go still within the square brackets and put a comma, just like with our enchantments, open up another set of curly brackets, we can continue working on our title. However, because we already started with keybind, we don't need to keep writing keybind over and over again because that's just the start of the title. Because this is going to continue the title, with our familiar ways here, we can actually just write text and get back to basics. We'll have another colon there, and we can put the next part of our title in. We'll keep it the same as our previous title, so I will write is and put a space after it. So this is. But this time, we can change the color of this word specifically. So let's go ahead and put our color in with a colon after it and another set of quotes. And let's make this one green. Okay, there we go. Now, if I just tested this right after, watch what happens. We have this is. Now, wait a minute, I hear yourself asking or pondering. We didn't actually set underline to be true for is. Now, that's correct. The way that text modification works in Minecraft, things like italics, underlined, bold, as long as you do it for the first part, it will carry through for the rest of your text unless you tell it to stop. Which, fortunately for us, we don't need to do. We can have the whole thing be underlined in this rainbow mess of colors. So we'll just keep that original underline from the beginning, and it just saves us some time, not having to continue to type it out. Okay, but we still need a couple more sets of our words, 
So I'll open up the curly brackets again, and just like before, we will write text. You guys should know what to do at this point. We'll open up another set. So we have this is, we'll write A, and then a space, comma, color, and let's make this one blue. Okay, just the second to last test here. We now have this is A, the underline continuing throughout, changing color with everything. Looks pretty cool. And our last one, we'll put text, title, comma, we'll add our last color. And just for fun, let's make this one dark red. Okay. Now this should be everything we need to turn our original this is a title into a broken up title. So if I go ahead and press the button now, you can see we have this is a title in four different parts. We've decided that we've colored each one individually, and if I wanted to, I could stop underlining or I could make different parts italic, which can be useful, but you don't want your screen to get too messy, so I just figured I'd leave the underline there. Okay, now that's a lot of the fun stuff you can do with the titles themselves, right? You can color them, you can change their text, you can do all sorts of fun stuff to let your players know if they're entering a restricted area or danger appears on your screen. Very, very useful. However, you can actually edit titles further, we just have to change the parameter of our command. Now we can change the timing if we so desire. So once again, if I go ahead and type slash title here, and we'll put at P, you can see we have different parameters, including action bar, reset, subtitle, but we're going to look at times for us. So if I go ahead and click on that and press space, you can see that we need a couple more parameters. So let's do this inside the command block. Okay, so same as before, title, at P, and we're going to change it to times. And now, what do we need to actually put here to change the timing of our titles? Well, what this is actually going to do is allow you to adjust three different parts. And if you see, I can put three numbers right here that all change different colors and nothing else after that. There's an error after that. OK, so what are these three numerical values and what do they actually change? Well, the first one determines how long the text or title actually fades in on the player's screen. And this number should be in ticks, not in seconds. So if I put, for example, 20 right here, 20 ticks is equal to one second. So that would mean our text, whatever it is, will fade in for one second. But just to show you the drastic differences between them, we will actually keep that on one tick to make it very, very fast. Okay, the next number, the stay parameter, as you can see right here, will determine how long the text once faded in will actually want to stay on your screen before the last parameter triggers. So for us, we will set this to 60 ticks or three seconds, just so you can see it very quickly fade in and it will stay on our screen for three seconds. Now the last number determines how quickly the text or title fades out of your screen. Just to show you the differences between these, we will actually set this to be 80 ticks or four seconds. And that's it, that's all the parameters here. But if I go ahead and press done and press this button, you can see nothing's actually changed. Nothing seems to have happened. Well. That's because the rest of the title commands don't actually show the title on your screen. Well, most of them don't. Uh, this is actually just changing the timing of the title for that specific player. Let me very quickly break this down. If I was playing on a multiplayer server and I triggered a set of command blocks that showed me a title, that w the same title would show for everyone that went up and hit that button. However, if I went off and clicked on another button like this one that changed my title's time to be all sorts of wacky with a quick fade in and a very slow fade out, and then went back to that first command block and clicked it, just like I'll show you here, watch what happens. It immediately fades in, lasts for three seconds, and then very slowly fades out. Now, hang on, you might be thinking, we didn't edit this title at all. All we did was edit our timing. And that's where titles get a little bit confusing. All of the other parameters actually affect the players themselves rather than whatever specific title you're working on. So as you just saw, we set not the, the time for that title, we set the timing for me or the nearest player to be these three parameters. So now any title that pops up on my screen will have this level of timing. So I can go ahead and I can click our welcome. As you can see, it's an immediate pop up, the three seconds, and then it will fade as well. And then after that fades, just like I showed you, if I go ahead and click basics, same thing. The immediate one tick pop in three seconds and fade. Now, while this is cool and you now know how to adjust timing, the issue here is every single one of your titles from now on is going to have this messed up timing and that might not be what you want. So twofold parts to this to solve this. First off, 
a good rule of thumb is whenever you're showing a player a title, make sure you also include the timing for that specific title if it's anything other than default. And you should do this every single time you make a title. This way, if a player has seen a previous title on a server and comes into the new one, it will have the timing that you want them to see rather than whatever the old title was. Second off, at the beginning of your command chain, you can also just have the following command if you want. Title, nearest player, reset. And if I go ahead and just click enter, that resets all title options for myself. So any of the future parameters that we'll look at in just a second and the timing is completely reset. So if I go ahead and hit basics, we're back to normal where you have that like one second fade in, about four seconds on screen and one second fade out. Okay. Now that we know about personal parameters and timing, it's time to move on to the extracurricular title stuff. Okay, as we begin to talk about subtitles, I figured the best way to actually explain them is to just showcase them. So I had to take my shaders off for this effect, but here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at a subtitle test. If you go ahead and look, we see Bethesda Presents, a game by Todd Howard. A screen you guys have probably seen too many times at this point. <laughs> but that little recreation just goes ahead and shows you that you can make very cool subtitles underneath your titles. So how do you actually do this? Well, if we take a look inside our pre-built command blocks already, I can give you a glimpse. So right here, this is just for the actual trigger test to teleport us up to the uh, very familiar wagon um, from the long time award winning game of Skyrim. Uh, we have our teleport command there first, um, and then we have our blindness, of course. And then we have our subtitle command right here in the chain. So rather than showing you one from scratch, I just thought it'd be quicker to show you what I already had written here. We have title at player or at P, and then the new parameter that we're working with is subtitle. And this works just like the title command. So we have in our quotes here, a game by Todd Howard. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and work on the key bind thing. We could change the colors, we could underline it, uh, and you could actually actively change the subtitles as well. But for our purposes, we just needed that very basic subtitle. And then everything after that is changing the times like I showed you before and our actual title as well. Now, keep in mind that the subtitle command doesn't actually show the subtitle on your screen only the title command will. What do I mean by this? So let's go ahead into our subtitle command block and go ahead and make a new subtitle. So if we do slash title at P subtitle, and in quotes, we'll just say, this is a test subtitle like that. Okay, go ahead and press done. I click this. And once again, nothing happens because this harkens back to the personal parameters I was talking about with timing. This doesn't actually show the player anything on the screen. It sets my new subtitle to be, this is a test subtitle. For example, once again, if I go back now to basics and click on this, you can see that even though we haven't changed this title again, it now says testing, and this is a test subtitle. And we also have the, uh, the Bethesda timing because I didn't reset my timing after that. <laughs> Are you confused yet? I promise the more you use it, the quicker you'll get the hang of it. Just think of it like this. The title command is the actual command that shows players something on their screen. All of the other commands actually modify the player's internal stats. How long they see a title for, what their current subtitle is set to, and then whenever you trigger a title, all of their saved stats will come up, no matter what the title is. So for example, if I come into this one and type at P and then put title and say, this is a test title, now, however, you'll notice if I click this, I haven't changed my subtitle. It's still what was set in this command block and go ahead and press this. It doesn't actually show our subtitle. <laughs> to add one more final layer of confusion to this, subtitles only seem to trigger once unless you keep them in the command chain over and over again. If I keep clicking this Bethesda chain over and over and over, we'd see the subtitle over and over again because it's in the chain. However, if you go ahead and watch, I'll click subtitle. This will set my new subtitle to this is a test subtitle trigger the title command, bam, there it is. We can wait for it to fade, which will take a couple of seconds here because of the uh, the little cutscene I had triggered. And then if I immediately press the button again, I no longer have the subtitle. It was a one-time thing. So just keep that in mind if you want your players to see a subtitle over and over again to keep it in the chain of your title command. Okay, that was a lot of confusing stuff. Luckily for us, there's really only one more parameter that we're going to tackle today in this video, and that is the action bar parameter, which in my opinion is pretty cool, but has very, very niche uses. 
So let's go ahead in here and look at our final parameter for today. So we're going to do slash title at P. And you can see right off the bat, we have this action bar. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Once in here, you can see just like before, we need a text parameter because it has this JSON reader error if we try and put anything else. So we'll go ahead and put a pair of quotes. And let's just say this is in my action bar just to see what this looks like. So what does this mean, action bar? It's not a title. It's not a subtitle. If I go ahead and press done and then press the button, watch very closely above my hot bar what happens as soon as my uh, my chat actually actually fades away. Check this out. If I click that, you can see this is in my action bar, and it's also very quickly. Similar to the title and the subtitle, you can edit this to last longer or be different colors, which is very cool, but this is a separate set of text that you can display by pressing the button and actually activating it similar to the title command. It's just a lot smaller and right above your hotbar. Now, why might you need something like this? Well, as a little extra tidbit, I thought I'd share a pretty good example. If you had something in your inventory, like a sword or a key, and you didn't want the player to open their inventory, you wanted the UI on their screen, what you could do is you could set up a repeating command block like this that just says as long as they have, you know, uh, a gold nugget in their main hand, continuously show them the action bar title, you know, this is a key if you wanted to. So no matter what, they would always see text right above their, oh, if I press this button, they'd always see text right above their action bar telling them that it's a key. So that could be pretty useful. But beyond that, if you have any other creative uses for that parameter, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear them. All right, and that's just going to about wrap it up for today's video. So now you should have everything you need to know about using the slash title command in Minecraft to let players see fantastic, beautiful, colorful text on their screen whenever you want slash force them to. Isn't that amazing? Well, as usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other suggestions for Command Basics videos, make sure you put them down in the comments below. I'm also currently working on editing a couple more shorts and working on the loot box video that I said that I had. And of course, I'm just finishing the script for the long-awaited, uh, simpler boss tutorial in Minecraft. And it will actually be updated to 1.19, I guess, by the time all this goes out, which is pretty cool. Uh, and just as a last piece of news, I have a new second channel now, which is pretty cool. If any of you are interested in watching me play some games, uh, I have a channel which is currently going to be dedicated to live stream highlights. I stream and trying to stream more weekly over on twitch.tv forward slash Mudkip Ninja. The link's in the channel. The second channel now is going to be called Mudkip Ninja Gaming, where you can see stream highlights currently, but will also be a place if I have any other multiplayer exploits or you just want to watch some Let's Play related material from yours truly, then head on over there. Why don't you give it a subscribe? Right now we're playing some Pokemon Legends Arceus, and I gotta say, it's quite fun. But other than that, leave any questions, comments, or concerns down in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy this type of content, and until next time, guys, see ya!